Today we're going to be taking publicly available sensor data and making it into a widget to place on a Home Assistant dashboard. And we're going to do it all via chat GPT, which means you don't have to be a developer. We don't have to touch code. We're going to be using standard prompts in order to work with chat GPT to create this widget. Now, a little bit of background. I still like to touch grass. And if you've been into the deep, dark trenches of my channel, you will notice that I am an avid fly fisherman. Now, the thing about fly fishermen is we're kind of the nerds of the genre. And we have to take in a whole bunch of data and crunch a whole bunch of data. And we love data. Very similar to my other hobby, which is home labbing. So with that, I like to combine both of them oftentimes when I can. So I thought to myself, this would be a great opportunity to use my home assistant dashboard, which I check every day to manage my network, to manage my home automation. I, I wanted to go here and be able to also see some other external sensors that I may not own. So some of the sensor data that I'm interested in as a fly fisherman are sensors that are on streams that tell us the CFS or the cubic feet per second of the water moving past those sensors. Now, fortunately, the USGS provides this sensor shack data for water rays all over the country. Now, having that ability to have those sensors publicly exposing their data via the internet we're able to grab their JSON feed, parse that, and make it into this widget. So CFS being rather important to fly fishermen because, and all fishermen, because it's a matter of safety, what this is going to allow me to do is be able to tell what the water level's at, whether it's fishable, and whether it's safe to actually be in the water fly fishing. So let's roll up our sleeves, let's get on the rig, and let's get busy. Our first thing you need to do is open up a browser and navigate to your instance of home assistance. Once you get here, I'm, I'm sure you're fairly familiar with this, but we're going to go over some prerequisites and just a brief little tutorial of the areas that we're going to be touching. So first, you need to make sure you have file editor enabled or installed. Also, you need to install hacks. If you don't have those things, I'll have information linked down below. Once inside of hacks, we also need to download something called Mushroom. Now we're going to be downloading this one called Mushroom Build a Beautiful Home Assistant Dashboard Easily. That's the one that you want right here. We're also going to be using a lot of probably developer tools just to check some th certain things. I think this is an area you should really get familiar with. It's kind of like a sandbox. You can actually look at some of your sensor states. You can get some of your attributes. These are kind of all the things that we can pull if we need to into things like uh, widgets or dashboards in this example. We can also do some actions. We probably won't mess with that. And we may be working with some of this template stuff. You can see out here, I was troubleshooting. It's already ran through this once. So the YAML section is actually really good too, because once you make um, any changes to anything in the file manager, you can come here and hit check configuration. Now, what I'm going to do is just go into file editor. You're going to see here, yours may look a little bit different, uh, but what we need to do is come down below here. I actually have some data in here. I'll remove it. Um, we're going to just need to be at the bottom of your configuration file. This is assuming that you're using one configuration file. If you're using, using something more advanced, you probably can follow along anyways. But typically, if you have a vanilla install, it's going to look similar to like this. You just need to make sure you are down below. The other thing I like to do is coming in here and go into settings. And we're going to come down to, let's go systems. And inside of systems, we're going to go backups. Now here... Um, we are going to take a backup. I already did this, but it's always smart to do a backup in case you can roll backwards. And in fact, I'm going to roll backwards because I've already set up some of these sensors. So I just want to make sure they're completely removed. So you go ahead and do a backup. I'm actually going to roll back and I'll see you on the other side. Actually, there is one other thing I wanted to mention. We're also going to be setting up a dashboard eventually. So I think right now, let's go ahead and just do that. If you go to settings, go to dashboards. Uh, these are all your dashboards here. I'm going to add one in and it's going to be a new dashboard from scratch. I'm going to name this river conditions and you can name it whatever you want, depending on what you're working on. Uh, I know that I probably want a water icon here. And then I will, it doesn't need to be admin only. I'm going to hit create. So now we have this set up, go back into here. I need to go and back this, not back it up, but actually roll it 
uh, back to a instance that I already have. So again, now I really will see you on the other side. Now that you've got your backup squared away, open up a browser and head to ChatGPT. I'm using the 4.0 model. If you don't have that available, I'm certain one of the lesser models, even O3, would be able to handle this quite nicely. So I'm just going to share with you the prompt that I used. Can you make a Home Assistant dashboard that displays current CFS, mean CFS, and color codes them with either above or below average? This should include only the following rivers. I go through three different rivers. I would like the full config YAML file to include sensors and template in one YAML file. Then I would like a mushroom dashboard that is color coded. I will have this prompt that I use listed down below. This associates these right here is just going to the sensors themselves. So I'm not even giving it the link. I'm just giving it the name of it and ChatGPT is smart enough to go out and pull this data. Now, the most important part is that obviously these numbers, as you can see, they're all unique. Now, these are quite close just because they are in my area and quite close to each other. So with this, I should be able to go ahead and hit go or enter and this should spit out the code that we're looking for that we're going to then go back to our in home assistant install and we're going to paste this in so let's go ahead and see what it comes up with all right that's good it's saying rest sen sensors to pull the data so that's what we want remember i talked about these like virtual type sensors or dummy sensors they're just sitting there as a rest waiting to ingest, ingest data from the USGS. Template sensors to extract the current CFS, hard code mean CFS, and compute flow status. That's really cool. So I'll, flow status is just going to be whether it's above or below. Uh, and the hard-coded CFS is just going to pull that from its historical data. And the template is where all the logic happens, that it's going to actually do some computations to make sure and figure out is it high or is it low. Now, see here, it's going to be above normal is green yellow is going to be near normal and red is below normal I, i'm okay with that color code i could always ask it to change now here it is here is the code itself it's got let's go ahead it's actually uh, labeled itself and it's defining all of our sensors first and then it should go into this template here's the logic that it's using uh, to determine whether or not it is a high value or low value so from here, all we need to do, and then, oh, down below, we're here. It looks like it's giving us the code for our mushroom card. So yeah, it looks like we've got everything. So now let's go ahead and do the first part. The first part is going to be adding this into our config YAML file. So let's go ahead and copy that. Now let's go over to our installation of Home Assistant and get this all set up. Now we're back over in Home Assistant. You're just simply gonna go to File Manager and you're gonna make sure that you are in your config file, which I'm not for right now for some reason. Let's go to Home Assistant and Configuration YAML and there it is. So scroll down to the bottom here, just give yourself a space or two. And this is actually, we're gonna paste that code in. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just gonna double check a little bit. So there it is, that's commented out, that's fine. We got sensors there. And then the next thing we should see is our template file for these. All right, that looks pretty good. The one thing you wanna check over here is this green check mark. This will give you an idea of whether or not your code looks good. This type of code is very sensitive to indentations and spaces. So it does a really good job of actually going saying, hey, there's no problems here. Actually, I know this is a problem, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it. I need to make that as a, uh, a lower case here. So anyway, so now it's it's check marked. You go ahead and hit save up here, and that's going to save your new configuration file. We will have to do a hard reset, which means you have to physically restart it, not just reload the YAML. But what we're going to do first is we're going to make sure everything's okay. We're going to head over to developmental tools or developer tools, developmental developer tools. Sorry, it's been a long day. So I need to then now hit check configuration. That is going to say, all right, look, looks like everything's good. So I'm going to hit restart and then don't do the top one. Make sure you're restarting this like a hard reset. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that and then hit restart. And I, again, will see you once this thing turns back up. All right, once your home assistant has rebooted, what we need to do is go back over to chat GPT. We're going to copy all of the YAML for the full dashboard. Once you copy that, we're going to go back over to the home assistant install. Once we're here, remember that dashboard we set up, river conditions. Well, we're going to go ahead and click that. 
and it's going to be an empty dashboard. We're going to hit the pencil button here on the right hand side and we're going to add in a new section. Here we're going to type in manual. Once you hit manual, that's going to give us that code. We're going to delete everything in here. And then we're going to paste in that full YAML code. And lo and behold, what do we have here? We have Montana River flow status. We've got the Gallatin. It's at 1350 for the mean, and it is a little bit below. So it's showing yellow. This one is below as well. And oh, looks like the old Yellowstone isn't doing so well. So now that we have this, my, uh, for some reason, my mouse is acting up. Let me see if I can fix that real quick. There we go. Now let's save this and then done. Now you can see I have a river uh, flow status. Here, I'll go full screen with it. I think it looks rather good. And one thing to point out is this is public data from USGS, uh, but you can also, I do something similar. I'm pulling in this data. These are just hobbyists that have exposed their weather stations data to the internet, and I'm grabbing it. But you can see here, this is Gallatin Canyon. That's the same area that this uh, gauge right here, the CFS gauge is. So I could put that next to this and this way I could have a full picture in terms of whether I was, you know, going fishing. I'd know the weather data and then I'd also know uh, what the uh, stream condition was or the CFS. And if that was, you know, higher or lower than the normal because we now have this color coding as well. So overall, I think Home Assistant is a really powerful piece of software, highly customizable. And now that we have access to things like chat gpt you don't really need to be a developer to get a lot of this stuff done all it really takes is a good prompt again that prompt that i use will be down in the description if you're interested and you can alter that with any type of sensor data that may be out there really neat that we can kind of have these dummy rest data sensors that are just waiting to be filled with data and we can actually pretend in a way that we you know have access and that that's a hard-coded a sensor but really it's just somewhere else so that blows my mind that we live in a world and a time that we can do that but also that we can use as i mentioned chat gpt to completely create something uh, that would take hours in the past for me to do that took what maybe 15 20 minutes so anyways i really hope you found value in this if you end up doing this uh, let me know in the description i'd love to hear from you all just to know what what type of sensors you're looking at and what, what you ended up doing with this. I would love to hear from you all. And of course, if you did find value in this, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out a whole bunch. Anyways, my name's Hill Phantom, and I'll see you next time.